Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. And today's big news, or at least, well, I say today's big news, there's been quite a lot of things done in the last stream. As usual, we've all been off being busy, so yes, there's going to be plenty to talk about. The first thing I'm going to touch on is that uh, Mike has finally managed to start producing the, the uh, Material 1 catalogues. So that's taken a bit, a bit of doing, and some of that is his fault, some of it isn't. So one of the, one of the reasons it's taken a while is because he overbuilt slightly, as, as mentioned in the previous video, especially with the first two cards. But also, he's, he's been suffering from some, some, some serious shortages of inputs. So down here, we're trying to make the uh, material testing packs, but they require Immersite, and we have an absolute crisis with that. There's, there is basically, there's almost none of it available. Fortunately, uh, Mark has been off trying to improve that, and so we'll be touching on that in tomorrow's video. But for the time being, this means that um, over here, we don't have any of the material science testing packs being made, and therefore, the system is just sort of idling, really. It's, just, it's not producing any material packs, so we can't do any testing. But up here we do have um, so, some some of this has been built. So we've got we've got these machines along here making the uh, the cold data. I think I touched on these last time. Dumping all all of the uh, contaminated uh, scrap will get will eventually get dumped out onto the belt over here uh, once the once the system runs properly and the cold data goes up here. Then in the next one we've got the same happening with the hot data. So we we. Uh, burn the packs with the uh, with the incoming hot plasma and then again output a load of contaminated scrap and and data pack data cards that can then come up here and as you can see we've, we've, we've managed to make a few of them there's one there's one there looking very very lonely on the belt making its way upwards but again this is down to a shortage of imacite as i say then here we're making the tensile data so we're taking the packs and we're stretching them and this converts them into uh, you, you, again once again you get a load of scrap out this time it's not the contaminated scrap which is sort of nice I suppose but it does output contaminated cosmic water and you also have to uh, loop back the iridium as well which is another thing to worry about so that shouldn't be too hard to deal with but it is another thing to uh, another thing to consider um, and there's a belt the wrong way round here by the looks of it so Mike you need to fix your belt uh, so basically, this, this this essentially, I mean, what what are we doing here? We're taking in a material science, a material testing pack. We're taking in steel and iridium um, and some lube, so we can stretch them without everything scraping, and then that, and then we get some data from that. Uh, so that's that's that that that's fun. Then up here we have the opposite. We're doing compressive strength testing. So in here we're we're basically trying to crush concrete and then seeing if presumably seeing if the iridium makes it any stronger. I don't know. But once again, that produces scrap and contaminated cosmic water. Both and those can get fed out. So once again, you've got we've got the belt over here to feed out the uh, the the, uh, the scrap of whatever type, and it comes all the way over here to these output belts. Um, Mike has done the thing that I, I try, personally try to avoid, where you have an underground um, belt going through the void of space like this. I, I tend to put in a bit of a, a bit of uh, scaffolding along there, so it looks a little bit less ridiculous. But uh, apparently, Mike is quite happy with ridiculousness. So who am I to who am I to judge? Well, I don't know, but I do anyway. So, uh, but also, he's then pumping out the um, the contaminated cosmic water here, and that is being taken away by this pipe that comes down here, and then from somewhere. Yes, here we go. It goes all the way across here like this, and he's then got a barreling plant over here, which I don't know. I think is, is actually fair enough because, for one thing, um, he's not using the, he's not actually using clean cosmic water over here. So for some reason, this this converts um, these machines are able to convert lube into contaminated cosmic water, which is interesting. I'm not sure where the water part of it is coming from, but it seems to um, it seems to be a thing nonetheless. So we are yes doing that. Mark also produces uh, contaminated cosmic water, and but he's got he set up over here for when he actually comes back and he's, he's finished fixing everything else all around the rest of the universe and actually carries on with the uh, the biosciences. Um, he's got his own recycling plant on site here, which is going to clean up the uh, contaminated cosmic water back into cosmic water. But that makes that makes sense for him for two reasons. One is that I think he produces a lot more of it than Mike does, so it's going to be a lot harder to ship it away. But also, he requires the uh, clean cosmic water here for some of these processes. And so it makes far more sense to do the recycling here, because then it could be pumped straight back into the machines again, rather than shipping it off and then bringing it back by train. Uh, in Mike's case, he's not using the um, he's not using the uh, cosmic water at all for anything around here, as far as I'm aware. Nothing, nothing that I'm aware of, um, and he doesn't produce it in quite the same sort of quantities. So uh, the, each of these processes, let, let's have a, let's have a look at actual numbers here. This produces one cosmic water each time it runs, which is not very much to be honest. It's, it's, it's a very very small amount. Is this one the same? Uh, yeah, one here as well. So in a way, this isn't here so much to give you a large supply of stuff you need to then sort out. It's there just to put in an extra little complication to make you work a little bit harder and produce some sort of disposal system and so for those sort of small amounts over here um, then then putting it in, into barrels makes perfect sense because it's a small amount and it just means you can chuck it onto the disposal belt along with everything else where it'll just vanish off down into the recycling facility and be dealt with over there 
In order to make the barrels, of course, he needs to bring in a load of steel. So that's what this station here is for. The train comes in here, drops off the steel, it gets made into barrels, and then we can, we can dispose of the cosmic water. As you can see here, we've made a whole two barrels worth of cosmic uh, we've barreled up two bar barrels of cosmic water and there's another 40 in the in the machines so it's not exactly being produced quickly but that that's that, but that is as, as i said expected and it's, it's the way this this a way the way this particular science pack works it's just to give you an extra thing to worry about rather than to make it rather than to give you a large quantity to deal with so yes, that gets that gets dumped on the belt here. He's put in. He wanted me to point this out, and I'm not quite sure why because it's horrendous and ugly. Um, but he's put in a. I think this might be meant to be a three to three balancer. Or, or, no, a six to three balancer because he's got, or five. No, five to three balancer because he's got two coming in here, three coming in here, um, and then three belts coming out the bottom. And then we then pointed out that we'd allowed the uh, the middle belt of the three down here. Oh, he's got another one of them down here as well. Another one of the middle of one of these belts was intended to be just for the um, material processing packs because uh, that produces huge amounts of scrap as you may may, may already know uh, especially later on once he gets to tier three of it and so this middle belt was intended for that so he's put in these um these splitters here that are going to cram it all onto the middle one if they can uh so this is all a little bit weird to be honest but uh, well why he didn't just dump it straight onto the belt I, uh, pff, it might happen what, what can i say However, this has meant that now he's got, at least in theory, he's got the systems down to produce all four of the science cards. And so up here, we can now start feeding them into all of these uh, research servers up here and start making the catalogues. So that's working really quite nice. Well, hopefully that will work really quite nicely once we get all of the um, the inputs ready. Uh, and for, as for now, well, have any of these made any? No, 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 and three so we've made we've made seven catalogs now which is um which is a good start <laughs> those have been brought over here and put into these oh no sorry we've made 16 maybe it makes more than one each time it runs we've made 16 catalogs that have been put into this train over here and they're ready to be taken off to the next science area and so i think this system is now i think it i think it's basically it, i think it's working the fact that it's produced a few suggests to me that the that the system that the he's, he's done the proof of concept he's managed to get some, some stuff built so that's going nicely now and once we get the supply of imosite coming in from uh, from taras as i shall show you tomorrow then we should have a nice plentiful supply of the uh, of the of the material sciences coming through um, and he's built up lots and lots of machines along here so i think this should be more than capable of keeping up with the demand and so we just need to fill the train up here and then we can send it off to the uh, off to the science area to be processed so speaking of the science area, that's just over here. And this was one of my, well, this was sort of one of my little projects before I ran away. So I, I made a, I did a copy paste of um, of this this area here, which is doing the uh, the energy science. I dropped it in here, <clears throat> and then um, then got, got distracted, went off to another planet, start messing around with things. So Tristan then came across, came along and filled in all the all the buildings and uh, programmed it all up correctly. So we've got Material Science 1 being unloaded here. We've got Energy Science 2 being unloaded here, but that's okay because it's just a placeholder to make sure nothing gets unloaded here that shouldn't. So that's fine. Um, and then all the way over here, this is all programmed... Well, this is eventually going to be programmed up with, with the uh, with the correct things for all the energy sciences. Uh, we're splitting them off here so we can make the in insights here. And then up here, uh, that's okay, that's Energy 3. But then over here, over here, we've got Material programmed up. And we've got these machines ready to make Material Science Packs 1. So, and we're even bringing in the imosite here and the heavy girders here, to, to, so we're, re we're almost ready to start making material too, once the catalogues start to come in. So this area has been set up and, and programmed and, and configured and, set, and is generally now ready to start producing material science packs. Once those have been produced, they will then be dumped onto the belts here, where they'll flow down, all the way down, 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 down here, and go into the science lab, along with everything else. So as you can see, we've got nice supplies of all of the, of the, of the first two astros and the first two energies here, so we can start doing all kinds of exciting research. So yes, this is going. I'd say this is going. This is going. This is going well. Uh, it just needs everything else to be brought in here. We do seem to have a shortage of significant data, and I suspect that's probably due to the lack of. Um, yes, that's due to the lack of astro insights coming in here, which is due to the lack of beryllium, which is something I'm going to get onto in, in a minute or two. We've also, I believe, not set up the material insights to be fed down here yet. So let's have a look. Um, yeah, there's a there's a prioritization here to send the material insights over this way because at the moment we have a massive shortage of those. Like we don't have any of those, and um, we don't and we don't really have the infrastructure to build them yet. So we don't want to start making we don't want to start passing them down here to be made into significant data just yet until we've got enough of everything else to make sure that we don't we don't waste anything. But eventually we'll have enough of everything. We'll be able to then move up to the next and then to the next um, significant data recipes and make things much more efficiently. But that's still that's still some researches away. So we've got a little while to go on that. 
while I'm over here in the science area I shall acknowledge that um, in the previous videos I noted that the uh, we, I hadn't put these splitters in basically um, that was that was um, definitely my fault <laughs> uh, so we, we had a we had a breakdown in um, in building here because it meant that as the as the science pack ones and the uh, the junk data cards are all that are produced from here were being passed out onto this belt the machines along here were snatching out all of the data all of the uh, the, the science packs and then it was gumming up with the junk data cards so now I'm filtering off the junk data cards as soon as they're made here and then again here passing them onto here and again here and passing them onto the belt and then over here I'm not bothering because there isn't a fifth science pack in, in the same way so those are just getting filtered out in the way they were before but the idea of all of this is that it means it strips out all of the junk data cards a little bit sooner, a little bit earlier on. So it's just pure uh, science packs coming in here. So in theory, this belt should now not gum up, and we should be able to carry on making tier two science packs even when there's a full supply of tier ones coming in. Now at the moment, we're not making the tier two science packs, but that's due to a lack of uh, significant data, the the uh, gold cards, rather than due to any sort of inherent problems with the system here. So I f yes, I, I fixed that. That was my first priority because I spotted it, felt a bit dumb, and and, and decided it needed to be fixed. Interestingly, Tristan has also come along here and he started making Holmium solenoids as well. That's the third thing, the thing you need for tier 3 uh, science packs because he's been very busy. You can see the catalogs down here, but you know, spoilers. Um, <laughs> so he started making those, which, look, what's the recipe for these? So it's an iron stick, a Holmium cable, and some rare metals. So I suppose, yes, you have an iron stick, you wrap, wrap Holmium cable around it, that will make a solenoid. I uh, don't know what the rare metals are for, maybe that's for sort of welding it to get I, I don't know maybe well, maybe maybe use some exotic metals to make the uh, to, to, to increase the uh, the flux capacity of the uh, of the iron stick I'm I, I don't know but it's a solenoid anyway um, that's how that's how these sort of things work uh, so yes he's brought in so he's brought in the iron in the, in the form of ingots which are uh, to here which are being chopped up and then iron plates coming out and rare metals as well all coming into this delivery cannon chest so he set up uh, delivery cannons on Norvis to ship both of those up that's one of the things he's done <laughs> and now he's bringing them out here onto this belt where they can be grabbed up by this these, these two machines and we can make a supply of these solenoids excellent so that's going that's going well we're going um, I'm quite impressed that he's managed to fit the, 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 so far it's been quite so easy to get all three of these tiers into here because I thought that that yeah, the first one is it, it tends to be easy. You just you just bring in the uh, the the, um, the the ingots and, and turn them into plates. Fine, um, but I was expecting the second and third ones, or well, especially the third one, to be a lot more complicated. But it seems to only be um, the the manufacturing to make them, of course, and then one additional machine to make the uh, the products that are required for it. So that's that's a bit easier than I was expecting it to be. You will note, of course, that each of these steps, you take the plates to turn into the cables, and then you take the cables to turn into the solenoids. So. Um, Depending on how, how how the science production goes down here, these machines might start to struggle, in which case we can either put speed modules in or possibly eventually put in a second machine on the top to produce more of whatever is required. We'll have to see what we'll have to see how it goes and, and what what how the shortages are and where, where the shortages are rather and, and see how it goes. But for the fourth one, we he may end up needing to make something significantly more complicated. I have a feeling it might be some sort of quantum processors. In which case, I think he's going to build them separately and bring them in by train and drop them off in the gap here, which is, is sort of sort of basically what I was intending. Uh, which, if, I, if I'm lucky, then we'll have the same sort of simplicity level down here, but I'm, I'm not going to hold my breath over that one. So while we're speaking of Tristan and the energy sciences, he's, be, he's, de he's been really absolutely blazing ahead or zapping ahead or whatever is an appropriate energy uh, type comment for that. So as, as you saw, not only has he got the, um, the tier 1 and tier 2s running nicely now, he's also got the tier 3s being made. If we look in this, that's not how you look in a train. If we look in this train, you can see there's actually quite a lot of all of those. It does seem to have ground to a halt now, but he's produced quite a lot of each of all, all three of those catalogs. And there's, there's one coming through there, so we'll, 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 we'll have to have a look and see what the, see what the limiting factor is here. So yes, I've got the tier ones being made here. We're making the all the all the other uh, memory card types along here, except for this one. Is this the one that requires? Oh, oh, it's short of green circuits. That's a very interesting thing to have run out of. Okay, so we're going to have to have a look into why there's a shortage of green circuits, but that could be something to do in the next in the next stream, I think. At the moment, we'll just note that there seems to be a shortage of those because he was bringing those over by train, and they were being dumped in over in enormous quantities from from up here. Um, Right. Okay. So there isn't. There is. It looks like there's not enough green circuits being brought up here into um, into Norbit, and therefore they're uh, they're not. We haven't got enough in here for it to for it to trigger this thing. There's there's less than a hundred green. Ah. Um. That I think might need to be a green cable. So I think what's going on here is that he's looking at the uh, the total number of green circuits in the in the system as a whole and we're noting down that down here one of the, one of these is requesting the green circuits to be brought up from Norvis and it's request it's got minus 5000 on there so we're subtracting 5000 from what's in here there's 4.6000 in here so that's a slightly negative number which means they're not being fed out up here 
This is set to um, greater than a or equal, greater than a hundred to only output when there's more than a hundred in here to make sure that you don't he doesn't run out. So I think this should be a green cable to there instead of a red cable. That's also connected. To, oh no, that's connected to this as well, which is minus ten million. So that's, that's actually even worse. Uh, so no, we can't do that. We'll have to. We'll have. We might have to just reprogram that to say if greater than minus four thousand nine hundred or something, because there's plenty in here, and they're not being passed out up this way. And they almost. And they will hardly ever will be, because when a rocket comes up, it's only going to top this up to the amount expected there to get it to about zero. And then there's a little bit of overflow, but basically to about zero. So this system is not going to work. We're going to. Need, yeah, that's going to need to be fixed. Um, but never mind. I'm, so, I'm actually I'm slightly surprised that there's uh, 7,000 up here in this train, but uh, yes, that's 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 not working. So yes, that's why we're not getting any any energy one catalogs through. Energy two and three are then being produced down here. So we've got okay, so we, we've got a, a slight a bit, a bit of a slow production of these things, um, which that, all that takes is data cards and thermofluid. I don't know why that's slow. Maybe it's just a slow recipe. It does seem to be. It's in 10 seconds. We have plenty of cold thermofluid. Yeah, I. Oh, there's, there's no power down the end here. I think these machines are just a bit too slow. So he'll need to come in, put in some more of these machines, or speed module them, or something like that. And then we can have a nice steady flow of these of these data cards coming through, and we'll be able to make twos. And the threes. That's this is this is this is a new new and exciting stuff down here. So we've got Harry Potter data here with the lightning bolts. We've got um, is that a panda? I think that might be a panda data. Panda data there. Um, swirly data there. And. Uh, I, I, I don't even know what to call that. Uh, it's sort of fuzzy data. Perhaps, so we've got yes, we've got these. <laughs> those are those are the things. So we've got Harry Potter, Panda, Swirly, and Fuzzy, and those all go into making the uh, tier three catalogs. You've seen this sort of thing before, so I won't go into it in too much detail. But I will have a quick look through to see if there's anything particularly interesting going on here. So we've got contaminated scrap as an additional thing coming out here. But the nice thing is we only have to filter off the Harry Potter data, and all the rest of it can then be shoved over onto the disposal belt over here and dealt with elsewhere. Which is, I still think that's quite a nice way of doing it. Um, it just feels easy. You can just throw whatever you want onto the disposal chutes. Uh, the panda data is, is bringing in green clouds. Fine, that seems to just be just working. TM uh, down here. These ones are a bit slower. That's bringing in the ion stream. Are we short of ion stream? We haven't got a huge amount, but we're not exactly short of it. Maybe it's, again, just the amount of time the machines take to run. And these are particle colliders, so these will take enormous amounts of power, I think. Yes, 10 megawatts each. So these probably could do with some um, e efficiency modules in them. And down here, we're doing basically the same thing, but with pink clouds. So I, I suppose these, these machines have got green clouds, blue clouds, and pink clouds, all doing more or less the same thing. They're bombarding uh, memory cards in a, in a uh, particle accelerator. Uh, particle collider, sorry, which is basically a particle accelerator, but two of the pipes join, I suppose. So here we're just turning three of the different clouds into different types of data science. That's absolutely fine. Those are all being fed up to here and and uh, converted into the into the um, into the catalogs. And so all of this is basically working. It's just some of the things are a little bit slow for one reason or another, mostly because of the green circuit thing that I touched on earlier. But so that's going. That seems to be generally going quite nicely. Um, it does seem like we've got a bit of a shortage of pink clouds because the train's still sat there and hasn't gone to fill up again yet. But in general, oh, and, and blue clouds as well. So we might need we might need a little bit of boosting of the uh, cloud cloud production over here that goes into the cloud store storage um, because at the moment it's struggling a little bit and also the the blue clouds we can't expand very far because the uh, spaceship ghost is in the way but that can be moved if we need to uh, yes yeah, so over here yes there's only 27 there's only about 50 just over 50,000 in this in, in storage here there's well, they've got a full train here but we've then only got another 30 on top of that Ooh, very very little of the uh, of the particle stream so and, um, and not very much plasma stream so yeah there's, uh, perhaps a little bit of boosting is required over here he's also needed to put in a bit more uh, a bit more cooling over here as, as, as I sort of suspected he probably would now part of that's my fault for upgrading these to the to the better recipe but it needed to be done so along here now we've got well we've got um, where did, how, how does he, how's this even plugged oh it goes into this this pipe okay um, so yeah, we've got we've got a, a decent amount of st in, in, in storage here, and then we're just cooling it down as quickly as possible with all these radiators, and then it's getting slurped up very very quickly by the hypercoolers over here. Um, and he's got, so he's got there's at least there there is some some and some. So he does have a bit of all of these. It, there's no actual problems along here, but he doesn't have particularly enormous amounts. But you know at the moment that seems to be absolutely fine. He's also been doing a bit of work on the recycling system over here. So a lot of these systems couldn't keep up. I think he, he expanded the uh, scrap recycling and the memory card recycling last week. Uh, now we've got a bit of a shortage of these uh, of the broken data card recycling, which turns a broken data card into scrap. So this is that. That's, that means this is 
filling up a little bit. There's still like 300 in there. It, it's it's 15% full. I think that's probably going to be okay for a while. We just need to fill fill all this up. Um, uh, sorry, not not fill all this up. We need a few more recycling machines to deal with the, the broken data cards, but it's not too too serious a problem just yet. Uh, he's implemented some systems to, to use up some of the uh, the stone from here because this was filling up rather alarmingly. So I believe he's dumped a load of it into the into the bus system over here. So we've got another yeah we've got another unloading station here taking the stone out, putting it into the in, into the into the bus system. So so this will be a slightly higher priority than bringing it up from Norvis because over here we are using at least a bit of stone for I have no idea what. Oh yes, uh, uh, space science packs. That's, I mean that's an important thing. We do, we get through space, space science packs at a reasonable rate, so we yeah we do need a bit of stone there. And I think he's also got it being taken away to be used as glass for something else, possibly possibly for making these mirrors. I'm I, I don't know. He or maybe maybe he hasn't done that yet. But it's a, it's a thing we're going to be doing with the stone anyway because we've got quite a lot of it coming through here, and it's difficult to know what to do with it otherwise. I've also expanded the system along here that's dealing with the contaminated scrap because I noticed we had a lot of it coming in. Um, at least a lot, quite a lot of that was coming in from the um, from the new material sciences that are being put in, but it. You know, we have a processing system here. It needs to be able to deal with it. So I, I doubled the throughput. And that now seems to be more than capable of dealing with it. However, we'll find out whether that's still true um, once Mike manages to upgrade. Mike manages to get everything running and he's kicking out huge amounts of the contaminated scrap. At the moment, it's just trickling out. But once the emocyte starts to come in, that'll, that's when we'll stress test this bit and see if it needs to be expanded. Tristan's also faffed around with the, um, the how, how the, the battery packs down here are being dealt with. I think he's probably put a, a smaller limit onto the number of... Brought in. Oh, no, I don't I don't. I, I don't I, he, he's hopefully fix the problem where we had too many battery packs around here anyway so we've got lots and lots of the uh of the discharged ones coming down a belt here these are all being brought up in, in the in the other in the secondary rocket um and then i think oh right we're only letting them in when there's less than a certain number in in here uh, that, that that makes a lot of sense so there should always be plenty of space inside this this chest here uh, it's completely full at the moment but in theory <laughs> there should or we should never we should stop feeding extra ones in over here to be charged up when whenever the chest is full or reasonably full. What sort of numbers are we looking at? Uh, equal to zero. Okay, so we've got a... Presumably that means we have a... No, that's just a trickle them through slowly. Um, I'm not going to go any... I'm not going to guess too hard exactly how he's done this, but essentially the, the, the idea is that we'll be uh, bringing in any... Uh, making sure we don't have too many batteries around here that are getting charged up because it, things, things are starting to backlog a little bit. And speaking of trains, he's also put in... Um, uh, fueling stations for all of the uh, recycling trains up here. This is a little bit spaghetti, but we have a belt now coming in here with the charged batteries on that's being fed round here and then uh, going up here. So it's, it's oh I see it. It's coming down. It's uh, it's coming off the the main feed of them here, coming down this side to charge all to, to to feed all of these trains, then looping across at the bottom to go back up the other side to feed all the locomotives on this side. So this is the downside of having the push-pull trains like this with a locomotive at each end. Um, it means you're you need to, you need to, you need to fuel both ends of the train, which is slightly awkward, but you know we're making it work. So it's not, it, it, it's not a problem. I think that covers uh, Nor Norbit fairly well. Uh, I'm going to touch on Norvis as well because there's been a little bit done down here, not a huge amount. There's been a little bit, a little bit of adding in um, delivery cannons, as I mentioned, like the, the rare metals and the iron ones for the for the um, whichever for whichever energy science it was that needed them. Um, I was for making the actual science packs, I think, wasn't it? For making those holmium solenoids. But also, while we're down here, Marcus tweaked the um, the where is it the the Covarexing systems? Is that you? This is this is you. Um, to go from he switched it from priming mode to production mode so previously he was trying to cram as much um as much uranium into these machines as possible to get them covarexing properly to get just basically the, the covarex weight where you try and get up to you you try and get your decent amount of uranium 235 into all of your machines so that they will carry on working now that he's done that he's gone through and reprogrammed it so that now we're going to be essentially just passing the the uh, the um but the, the, the cooked up uranium out the other side. There doesn't appear to be a huge amount coming through. This is a very, very slow and expensive process. So, we go, okay, we've got a little flood of it, trickle of it going in there. So, um, yeah, so we've, we've got a big supply a big supply of uranium ore coming in from this from this train. I'm wondering if the train has only just arrived and so we, we, we've, we've just started the system up and running again because yes, we do seem to be starting to get a bit of the uranium coming out here. Um, it'll come, <laughs> then it'll come, all, all the uranium and its byproducts come down here. You don't seem to get very much uranium out for the amount of uranium ore you put in. It seems a bit of a bit of a stingy process. Let's have a look at the actual numbers. So you feed in ten, and you get out one uranium and three quarters of a miscellaneous byproduct. So yes, for every ten you put in, you get less than two of stuff out. One of which is the thing you care about. And then over here, we cook up, we cook it again, and it turns essentially 
two uranium 238s into one 235. That's not so bad. That's only 50%. Um, that is at least 50% rather. Um, but yeah, we need to feed the, uh, the the cold, the 238 round and up here and back into the system over here in order to cook it up into the into the 235. And yeah, we're getting some out. It's not a particularly large amount, but the uh, station over here does appear to be quite happy at the moment. It, the, the state, these these um, these warehouses are half full. We've got a little bit being shipped out over here, and the train is full and ready to go off to wherever it's needed. So, yes, it's slow, but it does also appear to be enough, at least for the time being. So, yeah, I think we're sort of pro we're probably okay with that. Uh, Mark has had also added in additional coal trains, as I was talking about in the last episode. We had a uh, we had a problem down here where there wasn't enough coal coming in to be made into plastic. So he's now put in some extra trains that come swooping in, drop the coal off here, and as you can see, we now have a nice steady flow of plastic coming through. We've got a full train that hasn't doesn't need to go anywhere right now, and we've got 15% full in these uh, in in the warehouses across here. So it's not full we don't have a massive massive quantity of it at the moment but we definitely have it's, it's definitely improved and we have we have some plastic available and that probably means that now the low density structure systems up here are yeah not only they're running flat not only are they fully supplied they have now filled up their station down here now okay with with low density structures you can only fit four thousand in a in a warehouse because it's stacked oh i was gonna say I was going to say you can only fit 4,000 in a warehouse because it's only stacked up to 50 but that wouldn't make any sense it's because these warehouses are very very limited However, as long as they can, as long as these machines can produce fast enough, I think that's probably going to be okay. And uh, we've got a train, a full train here, which presumably means there is a it's sufficient on the uh, on the bus down here. Um, yes, there is. This, the, I mean, these these stations have sixty thousand in them. That's pretty good. Um, and there's and the bus is is apparently not running at the moment. So that also mean must mean hopefully means we have enough up in orbit. This rocket is uh, two thirds full. And if we go back up to uh, Norbit again, we can have a look and see how the uh, see how the supply of low density structures is going up here because that has always has been a big problem for quite a long time um i can't i, I still can't find them here they go, here we go yes yeah, so there's there's plenty up there there is the the belt is full and there is another 7.7 thousand in the in the warehouse so i think we're doing pretty well at the moment we have lots and lots of low density structures available and this is because i came along in the begin, beginning of the last uh, stream and i bumped up the number here to 10,000, as you can see over there on the right so that means we now have we're now requesting basically an entire rocket's worth of um no it can't be an entire rocket's worth i don't i don't know but lots and lots of low density structures so we should should hopefully keep large amounts in here if we look in this uh, warehouse we can see that yeah there's oh this is potentially problematic this is it could be a problem we've now got so many low density structures in here that and so much stone that the warehouse is full which could lead to a problem of not being able to, yes it's leading to the problem of not being able to pass the miscellaneous stuff on from here so that's an issue um, I think I'm going to need to fix that somehow. I don't want to reduce the quantity of low-density structures we're asking for over here, really, because that could lead to problems later. What I could do is put in a storehouse here, if we've got any, um, and have the uh, and have this feed into that as an as an overflow, as an excess, like we've got going on here with the rocket fuel, because we had too much of that in in here at one point. Um, so we could load this up with yeah, we could load this up with low density structures as well as sort of as a as a as an extra buffer, and that will take some of the pressure off here. And if we link that into the um, into the into the logistics network, uh, sorry, into the cable network as well, uh, then it'll count those towards what's being brought up over here. So I think yes, I think that's probably going to be the best way to do it. I wonder if we do have any of those random sort of smaller store storehouse things. Yes, we do. We've got 388 of the of the um, of the size four ones, which will fit in there quite nicely. So yeah, if I cram, shove one of those in there, then we'll be able to dump all of this excess stuff out of here that's not supposed to be in here, and we'll clean up this this cloggage as well. Because yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going wrong in this warehouse. The the rocket parts should be being fed off down to make a new rocket, or to be loaded into the rocket to be taken away. The uh, the petroleum gas should be put into here, and so on and so on. So yes, this is this is generally not how things are supposed to work, and needs a bit of fixing. But oh well, we can we 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 can do that next time. Oh, and last and very much least, uh, Mike will be very upset if I don't point out that he, that he, uh, he got a little bit bored towards the end of the uh, end of the stream because he was uh, waiting for the site to be delivered and also for a load of um, uh, a load of scaffolding to be put down. So he went round his build area and put in some little notes to remind me of things he's been doing. So I've, I've talked about most of this. Um, his working for thermofluid setup is still worse than the one I built. We know about that. He's got stations bringing in stuff over here. We don't care about that. That's bringing in resources. We talked about all the new stuff here. 
Now, I didn't mention that down here he's put in what he's calling a rotation area. So um, this bit, he's, he's decided that actually this was supposed to be put in vertically. So instead of having it going across here like this, he wants to put it in going up and down over here. And that's because the uh, this system is essentially limited by the rate of the inputs uh, along here. You, uh, so these, these belts can't make more than this many machines worth of material testing packs, even if they're running flat out. So that means that if he, if he needs more, he can't just extend it with more machines over here, as we mostly do around the rest of the base. Uh, he would have to put in additional belts feeding in and feeding out. So in order to make room for those, he's going to move move this and rotate it down to over here so he can have lots and lots of belts coming in and then some of them dropping off down here, some dropping off down here and so on and so on for as many as he needs to make. So the upside of this is it means there's, there's plenty of room here to bring the belts through and he's not going to have to try and spaghetti them through these awkward little areas down either side of it. The downside of it is that he's going to then um, is that I don't know if the he's going to have to spaghetti through the inputs from over here. So the plastic is going to need more plastic belts coming through because this one is already fully used by the machines he's got. Uh, he's going to need more of all of the other ones. These machines are already over a bit a bit over spec for the amount of stuff he needs, but he would still need more copper, more iron, more iridium belts coming up here. Maybe not iridium. No, iridium is only needed for other things. But more more belts coming up with all of these resources and possibly eventually more machines although that can be compensated for with more speed modules and potentially with and there's room for a few more machines and i think it's over spec anyway um but you know we'll see how it we'll see how it goes he can he can build that up as he wants as, as he goes so we'll um yeah we'll, let, we'll wait and well you wait and see what he does uh, he also wrote a poem. Um, I'm not going to dignify that by reading it out. I'll let you do that all by yourselves. <laughs> but once you've had enough of the poetry, well, I suppose that's the end of the episode then. So I'm going to stop here because this is a bit about the right sort of length for a video, I think, more or less. And um, I've talked about Norvis and Norbit, and those are the those, those are the sort of the core areas. Uh, in tomorrow's video, I shall talk a bit more about the sort of the, the the exoplanets, the places where we've been doing all, all the uh, all the resource gathering because we've we've had some um, we've had some resource issues, which is why, as I've been saying, we've not got any of the. Uh, We've not got very much of the um, of the astro science being produced. Although now, um, spoilers, I'm afraid this seems to have started working again. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about exactly why that is later. But yes, I've I've been uh, we've been off gathering additional resources from other places. So hopefully that'll give everything the uh, the kick it needs to get it working a bit better. So come back for that video tomorrow. Please check also check out the uh, channel sponsor. That's treefall.be. If you use the code Lawrence Plays, you can get 20% uh, off your first month. And while I'm recommending things, please come back on Wednesday when I shall be streaming XCOM. That's a lot of, a lot of fun, um, where uh, we go out and then uh, to, to fight the alien menace, as it were. And of course, Monday, I should probably mention that first to get things, you know, in order. Uh, we'll have um, the next the next stream where I shall be doing all of the fixing all of the things we've been talking about today. Uh, I also will hopefully have a video ready for Tuesday for supporters, and it'll come out the Tuesday after for non-supporters because that's how things work. Um, <clears throat> and so, and uh, so, yeah, that, that, there's a, there's a nice Factorio video talking about about how to go to space, basically. So I think that should be should be quite nice. Lots of people have been asking for that, so and I've uh, I finally managed to finally managed to put it together. So I hope make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next half of this video. Bye bye. <laughs>